In this section, we want to do, do a little bit of work with exponential functions, and let's look at some problems that involve finding the value of an exponential function. If f of x is 3 to the x and g of x is 1 half to the x, let's find g of 0. So I'll do that by simply substituting 0 for x in the function g. So I'll have 1 half raised to the 0 power, and I know that that's the number 1. So g of 0 turns out to be 1. Let's find f of negative 3. I'll do that by going to the function f and substituting for x negative 3. So I'll have 3 raised to the negative 3 power. That's going to be 1 over 3 to the positive 3 power, and 3 to the third power is 27, so that would be 1 27th. So exponential functions work just like regular functions, and when I want to find the value of the function here, I just replace x with that value and simplify. Let's look at one more of these problems. I have f of 2 plus g of negative 2. Well, f is 3 to the x, so I'll make this 3 to the 2 plus g of negative 2 is going to be 1 half to the negative second power. So I have 3 to the 2 plus 1 half to the negative 2. 3 squared is 9. 1 half to the negative 2, well, if I square 1 half, I get 1 fourth, and then I take the reciprocal of that, I get 4. So I end up with 9 plus 4, and 9 plus 4 is 13. So that's f of 2 plus g of negative 2, and I simply substitute for my variable x in the expressions for f and g and simplify what I get. Next, let's look at the graph of an exponential function. We have y equal 2 to the x for our exponential function. I want to find the graph of this. Let's first go through and make a table of values. When x is negative 2, I have y equal 2 to the negative 2. 2 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 2 squared which will be 1 fourth. When I put x equal negative 1 in, I have 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. When I substitute in 0 for x, I have 2 to the 0, which is 1. When I substitute in 1, I have 2 to the 1, which is 2. And when I substitute in 2, I have 2 to the 2, which is 4. So let's graph the ordered pair negative 2, 1 fourth. So I'll go back 2 and up 1 fourth x equal negative 1, y equal 1 half, so negative 1, 1 half. x equals 0, y equal 1, so 0, 1. x equal 1, y equal 2, so 1, 2. And x equal 2, y equal 4, 2, 4. And you can see that if I was to go further here, if I said let x be equal to 3, y would be equal to 8, x equal 4, 2 to the 4th is 16, so on and so forth. So now I'll connect these points with a nice smooth curve, and what I get is the graph of the exponential function y equal 2 to the x. And you can see it goes to the point 0, 1 on the x-axis. All exponential functions will go through that point, I'm sorry, on the y-axis, 0, 1. Let's look at one more problem. We want to graph the exponential function y equal 3 to the x and its inverse. So first, let's graph y equal 3 to the x. When x is 0, y will be 1. When x is 1, y will be 1, 2, 3. That's 3 to the 1. When x is 2, y will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When x is negative 1, y will be 1 third. When x is negative 2, y will be 1 ninth. So I can sketch the graph of that exponential function, y equal 3 to the x, real quickly, just like that. Now, the equation of its inverse is... x equal 3 to the y. To find the equation of the inverse from the function itself, I simply exchange x and y. Now, I could graph that myself separately, or I can use the fact that the graph of a function and its inverse have symmetry about the line y equal x. So I'll draw on the line y equal x. Looks like this. Of course, this would be much nicer on graph paper. Now, I'll reflect my graph of y equal 3 to the x about the line y equal x. And I'll have this point. When x is 1, I mean, when y is 1, x will be 3. When y is 2, x will be 9. When y is negative 1, x will be 1 third, 1 ninth, so on and so forth. All those ordered pairs have their coordinates reversed. And so here is the graph of x equal 3 to the y, which is the inverse function for this function, this exponential function, y equal 3 to the x. 
So graphing a function in its inverse is pretty easy if we know the graph of the function. We simply take that graph and reflect it about the line y equal x to get the graph of the inverse. Finding the equation of the inverse from the equation of the function is also easy. We simply exchange x and y.